One of the most important lessons to keep in mind in your dev career, and one I forget all the time, is that tech bubbles on Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, or wherever else are not reality. Only a fraction of developers are on Twitter in the first place, and due to the bubble effects of social media platforms like Twitter, you'll still only ever see a small fraction of even that. And that small fraction of developers is probably likely to be the more hardcore internet weirdos like me, who probably have too many opinions and can't help but fight with other internet weirdos about the best way to do things. If we were to take Twitter as reality, then we might assume that web development is currently in a place where the majority of real world apps are being built with React, Svelte, Astro, and maybe everyone is about ready to quickly drop everything and switch over to using Quick. So you'd better keep refreshing your Twitter feed so you can see who wins the hot take wars which ultimately decide which framework we will all be using next week. So fortunately or unfortunately, reality is a lot more boring. This is a graph of NPM downloads for some of the most talked about libraries and frameworks today. And whilst it's not the perfect indicator of usage in the real world, especially because of these spikes, which are just junk data, it is a reasonably fair metric to use. It is at least far more accurate than Twitter hot takes. The story here is the same as it has been for years and likely will remain to be for a long time to come. Web development is dominated by React, followed by a reasonably close tie between Angular and Vue. So I like most of the hot new tech and expect it to keep growing in the future, but the fact is that right now, everything on this graph has a tiny fraction of the usage that React, Angular and Vue have although both Svelte and Lit here do have reasonably strong numbers. But things get more interesting than this for Angular, and that brings me to what I think is the most compelling reason to learn Angular in 2023, and that is the number of jobs available. So ironically enough, in that unreality place that is Twitter, this graph recently did the rounds. So Logan Dev of Dev Job Scanner compiled job listings from various sources to see which frameworks are actually the most in demand in the real world, as in someone will actually give you money to do your thing with it. So whilst React had around five times as many NPM downloads as Angular, this data set shows that there were only marginally more React jobs available, with Angular jobs seemingly on an upward trend and React jobs seemingly on a downward trend. Combine that with the fact that Angular is much less popular among developers in opinion surveys, and that most new developers are probably going to pick React, there seems to be a great opportunity here to beat the crowds and catch an upswing by learning Angular. So keep in mind that job availability is going to greatly depend on where you live. So make sure to do your own research locally as well. Take Switzerland from the data set, for example, where there were actually more Angular jobs than React. But in Finland, there were very few Angular jobs. I think it's important not to put too much weight into one data source like this, but it does provide a perhaps surprising counterpoint to the Angular dead framework meme. I also think it's important not to just pick one framework to ride or die with. Learn multiple different frameworks, experiment with different tech, and aim to become a solid dev overall that can adapt to whatever the situation requires. Don't become the developer that defends to the death whatever framework they just happen to choose and now feel invested in. Learning multiple frameworks will give you a better understanding of concepts in general, and it's just going to make you a much better developer. And the other compelling reason to use Angular in 2023 is that Minko seems really pumped about it. And there has just been a lot of energy from the Angular team in general in modernizing the framework, with plenty of improvements already shipped and many more on the roadmap for this year. If you want to see more of Logan's data and a larger breakdown, uh, make sure to check out the blog post from Logan in the description. And as always, if you found this video useful, please feel free to leave a like or subscribe before you go. And I hope you stick around for the next one.